And here on our next video, we're going to take a look at something a little bit more realistic. So far, we've only been talking about one-dimensional boxes, and as we already discovered, trying to make a one-dimensional box, you're not going to be able to because there won't be any width. There's only length this way, no depth, no width. So how do you make a one-dimensional box? So an atom is, of course, not a one-dimensional thing. An atom is a three-dimensional thing. So what we're going to do now is take the equation we derived on the previous video, which is the energy levels for a one-dimensional box, and we're going to expand that to a three-dimensional box. So in three-dimensional box, we have dimensions x, y, and z. So how, is, how would an electron act in a three-dimensional box rather than a one-dimensional box? Well, in each dimension, the electron could have an energy state. It could be at the lowest energy state or it could be in a high energy state. So it could be independent in the energy state in the three dimensions. So what we're going to do here is take the equation that we had last on the last video and separate the things that will be different in each dimension. So the length can be different in each dimension and the energy state can be different in each dimension. So if that's the case, we can rewrite this equation as, as follows. We can say that the energy level in the x, y, and z direction, so three dimensions, is going to be equal to still h squared over 8m because it will depend upon, of course, the quantization by Planck's constant and the mass of the electron. But now we're going to multiply that times the energy level in the x direction squared over the, the length in the x direction squared plus the energy state in the y dimension squared divided by the length in the y dimension squared plus the energy state in the z dimension squared divided by the length in the z dimension squared. And now we have ourselves a 3D box equation which tells us how the electron can exist on those three levels. Now, of course, there's not a lot of things in nature that are box-like. So an electron, I mean, uh, an atom is not exactly a box. An atom is a spherical conscript, right? It's a spherical tip, well, more or less a spherical uh, shaped object. And so instead of talking about the x, y, and z direction, we're going to have to talk about it in terms of the spherical coordinates. And so in the next video, we're going to show you how you can change this into a spherical shape and then how that was then used to define the position of electron in a spherical shape uh, object. But what I want to get across here is that now when we expand things into three dimensions, what we need now is we need to have three quantum numbers defining the existence in the three-dimensional space. So what this requires us to do is come up with three quantum numbers which will relate the structure in that dimension and the energy in that dimension. So even though this is a very theoretical setup and there's no such thing in nature as a three-dimensional box, so to speak, we do realize now that since we have three dimensions, we're going to have to come up with three different quantum numbers that define the existence of an electron in three-dimensional space. So in the next video, we're going to show you structurally how we're going to set up the three quantum numbers based on an atom being a spherical shaped object with three dimensions and so therefore we need three quantum numbers to define the existence of that electron. And then of course there's going to be a fourth quantum number because the electron itself being a particle has the ability to rotate on its axis in two different ways and so that would be the spin quantum number and we'll talk about that one in a later video as well.